This is another special bonus episode of the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, Fly Fishing Founder Series, where you hear behind-the-scenes stories from companies who are going all in on fly fishing. This week, we have RentThisRaw.com with Brian Gingrich and David Moore. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. How's it going, everyone? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. Today's episode is sponsored by RentThisRod.com, who is one of our partner companies in the Wet Fly Swing Member Society. You get exclusive discounts from Rent This Rod and over 30 other partner companies who are on board to support your journey. Go to wetflyswing.com slash members to check out the bonuses and discounts from Rent This Rod and our other partner companies. In today's episode, I talk with David Moore and Brian Gingrich from RentThisRod.com. We talk about how they got started on an idea uh, to scratch their own itch in saltwater fishing. We find out about the most re- Crested Rods, um, how t- um, TNT came to sponsor them, and the Davidson River. Don't miss this one as we hear about the Great Smoky Mountains, Boy Bands, and Metallica. So, without further ado, here are the boys from Rent This Rod. How's it going, guys? Great, can't complain. Yeah, nice and sunny in North Carolina. Nice, nice, awesome. Well, we're going to chat a little bit about uh, the company you guys have going, which is definitely a new thing out there. I I think before you guys, I'm not sure if I ever heard of anything like this. Um, But before we jump into uh, Rent This Rod and all that, can you just talk about maybe how both of you got into fly fishing and maybe how you guys ran into each other? And yeah, whoever wants to start it up can can take off. Sure, yeah. Yeah. I grew up fly fishing. I can't quite remember what age I started, but um, I had a father who was very involved in it, and he would take me with him on work outings, and he had an uh, outdoors-based job a lot of the time, and he would teach me how to cast in our front yard, and then he also tied trout flies uh, on the side, and uh, he actually tied so many flies that, I mean, he's a kind of a prolific tire around Western North Carolina. So he was very well known at all of our outfitters in this area. And he would take uh, orders when he would travel. And then, you know, he would, he would go back to these shops on a weekly basis and drop off several dozen of whatever they had wanted, you know, whether it was stone flies or, you know, you name it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just would take me with him and got me interested in it uh, as a hobby and then later on as a passion. But uh, I probably would say I've been fishing since maybe seven or eight years old and I've uh, been fortunate to travel with my father a little bit. We would go up to the boundary waters of, between Canada and the U.S. and go on these week or two week long canoe expeditions where we'd fish and camp and you know, just do that kind of thing as, as men who love the outdoors. And, um, so I, again, have been fishing probably since I was eight. And then when I went to college, kind of put it on the shelf and didn't fish for probably 10 years or so. And, uh, after college, I got married, started my career, had a baby. And then, um, I met Brian, what, maybe three or four years ago, uh, through our church actually, and uh, at the time, Brian was living right across the street from my father. And <laughs> one day, Brian comes up to me at church and was like, hey, I'm going fishing with your dad tomorrow. And I was like, what? <laughs> so it kind of got me thinking about it. Probably it sparked a little bit of jealousy. And um, yep. anyway, Brian and I started talking more regularly. And I you know, realized I still had a stash of fishing gear in my basement. And Brian offered to get me um, get me out on the water. And uh, literally within a couple of weeks of, of that outing with my dad, uh, he and I were fishing. And hmm. I think that's been the case almost ever since. Like yeah. we, if we need a fishing buddy, we're probably number one on each other's speed dials. So um, that's cool. Been great. Yeah, Brian really got me back into it. So I, I definitely credit him with, with this obsession. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Brian, let's, uh, well, before we jump into here, that, that reminded me you were, uh, I think that's probably kind of common with the dad. I know, I know my dad, um, same, the same story. He had a, uh, a dad, an older guy. He was kind of a mentor. 
that he kind of fished with. And then uh, it turned out eventually he met his son and became best friends. And to this day, they have known each other for like, you know, whatever, 70 years or something. So I think it's it's pretty cool. It's the mentorship thing, right? Totally. Yeah. So, um, so Brian, do you want to, do you want to tell a little bit about your story? Did you start at eight years old as well? Well, I, 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 I grew up in the outdoors. Uh, you know, my family, I never really had much money. So all our vacations, I never really knew <laughs> that this was why, but all our vacations were always camping somewhere. Um, so we'd go, we'd go every year and we'd go camping. And, and so I, I always loved the outdoors and being outside. Um, and my, my uncle's, uh, my my parents moved up here, and I was born in Western North Carolina. But all my uncles and aunts live in Sarasota, Florida, and so we'd always go down to Florida too and visit with family. and And my uncles were all guides, you know, boat guides for regular fishing down there. and And so I just, I, I mean, I fell in love with fishing at an early, early age, and always would do it. Always would go to ponds, but never really fly fishing. And I was born and raised in in Western North Carolina, and just really never never knew about it. Um, you know, and, and, and kind of the same thing. I went off to college and, you know, met my wife and, um, started having kids. But when I met my wife, um, her brother was just, um, always into fly fishing their, their, their family, every vacation, it, it was always around fly fishing. And so he, you know, when I was in school, he took me out in their neighborhood pond and taught me how to catch bass on a fly rod <laughs> And just from that point on, it was, that was my obsession. It was just, I had to have a fly rod in my hands. Um, and so I've only really been fly fishing for about 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it, it, it became an obsession at that point and, um, just couldn't get enough of getting out on the water. And, um, and so then, you know, again at church, it was, I was always looking for a fishing buddy. My schedule, I traveled for work a lot. And so my schedule during the week could be flexible. And so it was nice to be able to not go fishing on the weekends and get a, sneak away during the week sometimes. And, and Dave and I had similar schedules and it worked out to where, you know, we could just call each other up. Hey, I've got a little bit of time in the afternoon. You want to hit the water? And, and it just became, you know, a long lasting friendship, cool. you know, just, just going out on the water and fishing. So I've, I've been in the outdoors my entire life. Uh, but fly fishing has become the obsession the last 15 yep. or so years. Right. And you guys have turned into a business now. What, so when you guys would call up and have that little bit of time in the week, where, where would you head? Is there a, a spot that, that a river that's kind of your home waters you guys would hit up? Well, we can't give that secret or, away. Or, uh, yeah. If it's, if it's too much of a no, secret, no, <laughs> uh, we would, there's, there's so many places out here. We go out to Madison County. There's, um, you know, stretches of, of water out there close to the border of Tennessee. Or what is the, what is the biggest, do you think the most you know popular, the one that people would know the closest waters near you guys? Well, the, probably the Davidson. Okay. Uh, Davidson is, yeah. is the most well-known and pro- prolific around here. Okay. It's out in the Brevard area. Um, and it's a, it's a great river. And, and what, have, what species are you guys hitting there? Uh, they have every, I mean, so we have Brown, Brook, yep. Rainbow, everything. Yep. Everything, everything, but maybe the, the Colorado cutthroat, you yeah. know, we don't have those around here, uh-huh. but uh, yeah. A lot, a lot of our waters around here are stocked. Uh, we have a really strong, I think a hatchery, um, you yep. know, hatchery connections around here, but, sure. uh, we still have a lot of native fish too. It just depends on where you go. But like the Davidson for one is, is a stock stream. I think they still have wild fish in there, but, um, they're, it's a very challenging stream, uh, or it can be, uh, mm-hmm. depending on when you go. But uh, the water is very clear, and um, but that's usually people that come to Asheville or West North Carolina. I would agree, probably go there. Okay. Um, there's a lot of outfitters out there, and it's just part of the Pisgah National Forest system. And um, there's swimming holes and there's waterfalls. It's just a great place to be outside. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, if we have time, maybe we'll we'll dig back into some of that stuff. But let's. Uh, Let's take it into the uh, the the company, the Rent This Rod, because you know this is a pretty cool uh, idea you guys have going. Can you talk about how uh, the idea came to be and and how you and where you guys are at now? Yeah, so you know part of part of this actually just came from we were fishing together all the time, and uh, and it was it was one day we were fishing at one of our our favorite spots, and I told Dave, I was like, you know, man, I'm I'm going to Florida next week. And I've always wanted to try ocean fly, like I've always wanted to, to fly fish in the ocean, go for redfish and things of that nature. I was like, but man, I, 
I don't necessarily want to spend a thousand bucks to fifteen hundred bucks on a new setup because I'm only going, you know, I only really go once or twice a year to the ocean to fish. So like, wouldn't it be cool if I could rent something? And um, <laughs> it started a conversation that day along the river. And I could see the spark in like Dave's eye go, huh, this is this good. <laughs> it was like this light bulb moment for him. And like, you know, he went home and started building a website. Um, <laughs> I was like, well, let me build this concept out, see what, see what happens. And, you know, ended up forming an LLC. And then, you know, we started renting. I think we started by trying to rent our own gear <laughs> mm-hmm. and then just progressively, you know, started calling some people and said, hey, what do you think about this? And kind of did some groundwork with that and, and got some feedback and everybody's like, Oh man, I love that idea. And, mm-hmm. um, so we, we built it from there and yeah, yeah. it's, uh, it started literally that simple. Um, Brian tossed out this idea about there being a lack of, of equipment, um, and really equipment rentals online. I mean, you can still rent stuff at local fly shops, but if you're, you know, States away, you're not going to be able to know necessarily which shops to go to. And, um, we started looking and then there was just a void of, of web-based rental options. And, um, yeah, like Brian said, I, I literally got on GoDaddy and checked if the domain was available and we just rent this rod just seemed like it fit. And then, uh, designed a logo on a, on a web-based, you know, public owned, uh, you know, logo concepts and did that. And Brian formed the LLC, I think within a week mm-hmm. and, uh, we were off and running. And one of the, I think it's a neat story, but um, just to show kind of how well the the doors are open, I feel like in the in the community at large. But um, I had made a random Facebook post uh, a couple of years ago um, about uh, there was long story short, there was a school bus that pulled up next to me in traffic. This is very very ironic, but um, the the bus was green and copper, and I took a picture of it, and I had a Thomas and Thomas fly rod at the time that was the same color, and so I did a mashup photo. And I put it on Facebook, and um, about two weeks later, this guy named Neville Orsman liked and shared my photo, and I was like, who's this guy? And uh, I started looking, he's the CEO of Thomas & Thomas. Nice. And so I was like, wow, that's kind of cool, that's just cool. kind of mad props. And so I sent him a message and said, hey, thanks for the Facebook love and all this stuff. And when Brian and I rolled out this business and we felt like it was legitimate, um, I was like, let's just see if we could get the foot in the door with TNT. And hmm. man, he gave us more than the time of day. He was like, yeah, let's talk. And uh, at the end of that conversation, we had he had pledged to outfit us with our first round of inventory, and it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. No, that that was going to be one of my questions about. We've talked a little bit about rods and gear on on this, you know, on past episodes, and that that's kind of a one of the questions is you've got a lot of great companies out there, and I was kind of wondering how you went to uh, you know Thomas and Thomas. Obviously, they're one of the, you know, probably one of the best, one of the biggest sort of things. So that that makes sense. Um, okay, so so basically, you guys you know had this idea, sort of a need you guys had, and the idea is you know if you're going fishing, you know whether you're going you know a, a Euro Nif rod or heading over to the salt or even a, I mean I'd imagine do you guys ever get just your basic um, you know nine foot five weight request? Yeah, is that, I'll, pretty, I'll, is that pretty common? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have people. I mean, what is your, you know, who is your target? I mean, I know you guys have this cool thing, I believe, with uh, with Yellow Dog now, which seems to me when I heard about that, I was just like, yeah, that's a, that's a no brainer. I mean, that's the perfect fit. But just for your general, you know, person out there that hears about you, I mean, who is your target audience? Who is that person? Um, that's a great question. I feel like it's may may answer it indirectly, but uh, we rent more saltwater equipment than anything okay. else. And um, yep. our inventory, if you look at our inventory on the website, it kind of reflects that. But um, we've done, we, we rent locally as well as uh, as shipped rentals. I mean, our, our bread and butter is in shipped rentals. And because um, we're. W- now, what are these? Oh, and shipped. Uh, shipped, yeah, sorry. Uh, yep. You know, we're, we're shipping rods and reels to customers all over the continent. And, um, uh, but we also do local stuff. And so when, when somebody comes to Asheville or West North Carolina, they're, they're going to rent a freshwater setup. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we do rent plenty of the nine foot fives and nine foot fours, which is pretty much perfect, perfect setup for around here. Uh, but we've also shipped things like that uh, to California for people that are going uh, either for the first time right. or they're not quite sure about purchasing this stuff up front. And, you know, it's a side note. It's a great way for somebody to demo something uh, on the water uh, without actually, 
plopping down, you know, a couple of grand on a setup that they may not fall in love with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I do think we, we do a lot more saltwater, uh, and especially with yellow dog now uh, that you mentioned, we actually go live with them officially tomorrow. Oh, wow. But, uh, so the timing is great for, for us to be talking with you, but it's, uh, it's a huge deal. Uh, and that's, that's really taken our saltwater inventory up several notches. Right. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. I think just adding to that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm always thinking in a big proponent of trying to create win-win situations and it's not, we're, you know, we're not out to get fly shops or anything like that. I think we just really want to be mobile and try to grow the, the, the love of fishing and fly fishing in particular in the industry. And I think Neville saw a little bit of that with Thomas and Thomas of going, you know what, you can put my rod in somebody's hands all the way in California that may not go into a fly shop and have access to my equipment. Um, and so I think, I think that's kind of a, a cool way of doing that um, and doing business is is being really mobile like that and, and growing the industry that way. Um, and so it's exciting. It's, it's like, I'm passionate about fishing. I want people to enjoy it. And sometimes, you know, going into, walking into a store, can be a little bit of an in, intimidating. And so this gives you, Hey, I got it shipped to my door. I can practice in my yard and, mm -hmm. you know, feel, get comfortable with it. And, um, so it's, yep. we, we've seen a lot of that happening as well. Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. And it makes sense. And we might have time to talk a little bit about the, uh, the group that uh, I have going here, which, uh, we're, we're kind of, you guys are involved in a little bit and, um, you know, I mean, it makes perfect sense because what I'm doing, you know, just this podcast, right. We're trying to provide value for people that are listening that might not have that opportunity to, to be in the fly shop necessarily, but yeah, it's just an alternative method. And today there's tons of information out there that's free, tons of resources and you guys are just another resource. So, um, yeah, no, that's good. What, so the value, I mean, for somebody, it sounds like there's a, you know, obviously the salt is a big thing. Um, but the rod too, I mean, Thomas and Thomas, I think is, is able, is that, and you have the reels and then sci scientific angler. Yeah. We, so, uh, we actually looking at the website, I was building on it last night. It's, it's crazy to see the brands that we're associated with now, but, um, TNT is, uh, predominantly in our, in our wheelhouse as far as the rod stuff goes. But, um, with uh, the partnership with Yellow Dog, that brought uh, Hatch to the table. Oh, okay. Uh, so they uh, they're essentially our saltwater reel of choice, and um, that's that's been a relatively new thing. Gotcha. Um, but we had uh, at the time it was kind of an exclusive deal with Ross Reels. Uh, we oh, formed okay. that last fall, and uh, those guys are fantastic. And so most of our Ross Reels inventory is is on the freshwater side anyway. So it it worked out to add hatch to kind of take over the salt. Um, but with premium, um, that, that name and, uh, that word I think, uh, would associate well with, with brands like hatch and especially with TNT and then of course able. Uh, and so we, we were thrilled to be able to get able into the mix. Um, very gotcha. recent. So, so it is that, yeah, I mean that premium piece is the second, I mean, part of it is getting the rod that you don't have, but part of it is people maybe, I mean, how many, what percentage of people do you think are grabbing your stuff because maybe they even have the same rod, but they want to test out a TNT or a, or a, a, a hatch. I mean, is there, is there much of that? Do you think? Uh, I can't answer that probably yeah. in very accurately. Um, uh, and I, and I, I say that because I, you know, thinking about again, the companies where, you know, you, uh, there's, I don't know how many companies are at that same level. And in fact, you, you know, we've kind of talked about this on the show before the rods that there's, there's a ton of rods out there, right? I mean, all sorts of different brands. It's hard to keep track, which is actually a, a little bit of a confusing thing, but, um, yeah, I guess it sounds like maybe it's just getting the right rod for the right situation. And, and then Thomas and Thomas is just a big bonus having one of the best companies on board. Well, and I think too, like, you know, part of it is that it, you know, my, my sales pitch, so to speak to some, the, you know, the rod companies or whatever, it's, you know, I, I, some t Dave and I've got our brands that we've been loyal to in the past because, you know, I caught my first fish on a Orvis Clearwater, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like that rod that I, it's, it's kind of, it's ingrained in my, my mind. And so it's like, it's like one of those things, if you can put a rod in somebody's hand and they catch a f giant fish on that particular rod, they're going to be like, oh man, I kind of want that rod. Right. And that's what we do is we want to try to, we're not necessarily trying to sell things, but we, we, we love to drive people back to the, back to the industry and back to Thomas Thomas, back to Hatch 
that they would go back and buy those things then too because um, because of that memory and because of that having that in their you know yeah. so that it, makes, it's that makes it's sense. Important. yeah the, like the brand is part of the memory so yeah yeah that makes sense so you know it seems to me I'm not sure I mean I guess a couple questions here is long term you know what do you guys see I'm not sure if you've looked out and thought about you know five ten years from now or whatever but I mean it seems to be you know, obviously the company connections are amazing and I, I enjoy that, you know, I enjoy the connections, but having your own brand, your own rods, I mean, you guys, that's a doable thing you can do. Is that something you guys think about like long term? I guess, you know, like, like an option where you just have everything in house. I think that's crossed our minds. Um, you know, five, 10 years down the road, that could easily, I could easily see that happening. Um, I, I think that at this point in time, part of the appeal uh, to this whole process is that yeah. we have these world class brands that we're able to offer, um, rather than some, yep. you know, it, it, whether than rent this rod brand fly rod, but uh, instead it's you know, oh man, I can rent a Thomas and Thomas, heck yeah, you know. And, right. um, but no, I mean that, that makes sense. But you know, I think that right now we started looking. I mean, all of our all of our products are made in the U S and, um, that's important. Uh, it's not, not the end all, but, uh, you know, I think to find a uh, quality, you know, U S made products like that are getting, or they have been hard to find. Um, it seems like most stuff gets, you know, assembled and built offshore, which I understand why, but, mm -hmm. uh, U S made products, I think go a long way with us. Well, I think premium is kind of the key, and we want to to get companies that that you know just are known for that and and get their stuff out there. I, I don't think we want to you know ever really get into the let's go get that you know fifty dollar Walmart rod and and put it on to rent for somebody for you know ten dollars for the week. We really want to target a specific group of of premium you know rod carriers and and, and people like that. And and I also think that it, it's it's again creating the win-win situation. I think if we partner with companies that are interested in getting growing the fly fishing industry as a whole, that's the ultimate goal in my mind. Five ten years down the road, is what does the industry look like now, and and how how do we have an impact on that? Um, because I th I think you know with Amazon and all these things that have popped up, you know we can be kind of in the middle of that going, let's let's mobilize and, and create opportunity for people to get outside, get out on the water and make it easy for them. It shows up at their door or shows up to their, their lodge or wherever they're going. They don't have to carry it with them. Um, I also, you know, five to 10 years down the road, I, I've, I've kind of built out a, a model of, of membership, you know, like mm -hmm. if somebody's a member of Rent This Rod, they can have access to all these things at, at any given time. And um, that takes time. Um, that's going to take some, some significant time and energy in, in trying to build inventory and make sure we have enough to accommodate people with that. But, but um, there's so many different ways we could go. Uh, you know, there's, right. there's a red model where we could have stations and work with fly shops and that to make generate revenue for them as well. So hmm. there's, there's so many different opportunities that we have with this that, um, we're excited about. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And it seems like it's such a new concept that, you know, it sounds like obviously uh, TNT, they were fired up about it. Um, you know, you also hear about occasionally people, you know, you come in with something new, kind of changing things up um, that they're, I'm not sure if blowback's the right word, but people are a little bit kind of, you know, hesitant. Did, have you found that at all with, with people where they didn't quite know what you guys were doing and kind of had questions? Or, or it sounded like there, there were some plenty of open arms when you guys uh, threw this idea out there. Yeah, I would say the overwhelming majority has been positive. Um, you know, we, we love this idea, love this concept. We have had a few that have basically said, yeah, we're just going to focus on, on, on this. You know, I, maybe not really even researching the concept fully that just didn't want to hear about it. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, cause I, I do see down the road that carrying more, brands is is possible um and and we want to we want to do that we want to have a variety and give people choices and, and create a menu option um, but also want to make sure we're very loyal to the companies that jumped on board with us early on and said you know we want to be with you and and we're we're gonna we're gonna be pretty loyal to those companies 
So gotcha. Gotcha. That makes makes sense. And, and, uh, you guys, and so if I'm getting into this, if I was going to, uh, rent a rod, can you just give us an idea of just the cost, uh, just generally, if somebody was interested in doing this, what it might cost to, uh, to rent and it, does it vary versus saltwater versus freshwater or all that? Uh, no, great question. Uh, the prices are pretty simple and we've tried to keep them that way just so um, I think when you start getting really complicated options people get a little confused and it just and it makes more work for us mm -hmm. so we're trying to work smarter not harder necessarily yeah. but um, we uh, local rentals are their own thing but uh, the 10 day standard rental package is uh, currently $180 mm -hmm. uh, you get to use the rod and reel for 10 days so the shipping transit times aren't included um, that gets you a rod and a reel with a uh, fly line that's appropriate for the situation you're going to fish in. Uh, it doesn't include leaders or flies or anything like that. That's a small way that we can still have folks support their local fly shops mm -hmm. and still, still buy materials. But um, working with Yellow Dog, also uh, Jim Clug encouraged us to build out a 14-day uh, rental option because some of their trips can be closer to the two-week end of things. Right. Uh, so we have that option as well. Mm -hmm. um, we only recently got corporate accounts with you know third-party shipping like FedEx and UPS, and so we are turning a corner in that we'll be uh, soon able to offer return shipping. Like so, right now customers when they when they pay us, uh, the front-end shipping is included in the price, uh, but they're responsible for paying for the uh, return shipping oh, gotcha. with it. Um, and yeah. so we're soon going to hopefully be able just to have return labels included in yeah. the package and we'll bulk up the prices just a little bit to reflect yeah. that. So, yeah, you, so, might, you, know, you might make it a, uh, yeah, it might be 20 bucks for shipping it back. So it might be exactly. like 200 bucks, which is still pretty reasonable 20 bucks a day. I mean, do people, and is there a one day or two day rental, few day rental, few day? Uh, if you're local right now, yes. Uh, you know, if, if we felt like there was a really, serious person that this really needed to something for one or two days that lived elsewhere that we needed to ship to like we would we could do a custom option yeah. um and a custom price but right now it's just it's it seems like it's simpler just to have a click and done like even if you don't need it for 10 days maybe you need it for seven or eight you know the people yeah. are still <laughs> okay in for a couple extra days so roughly so basically yeah the 10 day is usually what you guys do and and okay, well, no, thanks for clarifying. That makes sense. And hey, I mean, 20 bucks when you think of a trip, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, just gas, that's, I mean, that's not even, you know, <laughs> half a tank of gas, uh, you know, per day or whatever. So yeah, that, that's cool. Okay. Um, now what do you, for, for you guys, uh, who is, you know, who is the, uh, who's the brains and who's the personality in this, in this operation? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or is that is that a hard question to answer? <laughs> That's a hard question to answer because we both. I mean, we are at each other all the time, joking and uh, like. I think I, I'm I'm a big. I've I've always been in my whole career has been nonprofit world, but strategic planning and you know working with organizations develop fundraising plans and goals and you know I, I love whiteboard sessions and love kind of dreaming up big picture type of things. Um, I think Dave is, is very detailed. Um, he also like, I mean, he knows our inventory, where it is very organized. Um, and so we work really well together. I think we complement each other really well with that. Um, as far as the, the personalities go, we're both very similar in personality and, and joking around and, and we, we just have fun. And, and I think we're, we're having so much fun with this. And that's my only encouragement to anybody thinking about getting into a bit like, Mm -hmm. it, this does it doesn't feel like work and it is i was sitting doing accounting the other night and i'm like this is awesome you know yeah, and i that's cool it. but it's it's because i love what i do and yep. and trying to build something with with a good friend of mine and and mm -hmm. so it's fun but I, I mean i think i'm a little more big picture and i don't know if you want to you know take any more of that no, i agree uh we're both gifted at, in different facets i mean you know brian was the one that it, essentially got us legitimized with being, you know, forming the LLC, like he did all that. And so like, whereas I might've built out the website, um, I, I will, I will not say that Brian is not creative. It's just that I, like we take on different roles and it's like, well, um, yeah, I can design a website. I mean, go, let's be honest. I mean, GoDaddy, it, it makes it pretty, pretty yeah. simple. 
Um, I mean, I, I kind of manage the social media aspect of it right now, and that's just by not necessarily default, but we just kind of started it that way. Um, I think it pushed pushed into into service. I think either one of us could take on uh, other roles, but uh, again, just to echo Brian, I think we're very complimentary in the way yeah. we've laid it, and we're only accountable to each other. It's great because we're our own bosses, right? <laughs> Does GoDaddy? I'm not totally familiar. Do they actually? I mean, do do they ho- or can you build the site within GoDaddy? Or do you, I thought it was just like a name you buy the URL. Uh, that's I, I don't know their history, but that's still a big part of what they do. Is uh, yeah, you know, they host your website, but um, they uh, like we bought our domain through GoDaddy, uh, rentthisrod dot com. But they uh, so we pay a monthly fee for that. But then they also have a website building option where right. you can self or you can pay them to design oh, wow. the web your dream. So it's really cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, oh, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, yeah, I think, uh, we're kind of, yeah, well along here. I had a few other things I wanted to touch on and, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the fishing piece. Do you want to, uh, I usually ask a couple of just general fishing, uh, tips and resources. Uh, if you guys, you know, we were talking about originally the, uh, the Davidson river, right? Uh, yeah, the Davidson, it's, uh, probably synonymous with, most people think of the Davidson when they come to Asheville to fish. Let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, the Wet Fly Swing Member Society and Rent This Rod. If you have been enjoying the podcast episodes and want to support the the show and small local businesses, get some bonus content, then you need to check out the Member Society. For about the price of a pint of beer, you get inside access and exclusive discounts to over 30 of our partner companies. Rent This Rod is one of those companies um, who are pretty much going all in on their new innovative idea. I originally reached out to many of the listeners of the podcast and asked them um, who their favorite small to mid-sized companies were. I then reached out to those companies and and that's kind of how the uh, group was made. I'm now putting together a, a little bit more um, content to help uh, get folks started and get them along on their journey. You can connect with our little uh, with our little community, support local businesses, and join the movement at one convenient spot. Go to wetflyswing.com slash members to check out the details. Uh, that's uh, wetflyswing.com slash M-E-M-B-E-R-S to support this movement and your journey. Okay, back to the show. And what do you think if you guys had, you do, I guess, a lot of trout fishing, if you had to, you know, each one of you guys pick your your one go-to fly for for the day or, or for the for the week, what, which, what would that be? <laughs> Around here, an olive woolly bugger. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. It's like, it's the olive woolly bugger is, if nothing's working, yep. I always just go back to it. That's Around. cool. Yeah. I mean, it works on stocked. It works on native. I mean, it seems yep. like it's the perfect fly for around here that that is that's the uh it's funny because it is kind of the greatest fly ever in the pretty much the world the yeah. old, the old. <laughs> all right um and what about um you know so you guys got in came up with this idea on rent, rent this rod but what about you know just your fishing do you guys have any resources books magazines videos any any uh stuff that helped you guys kind of get into it or or you know along the way well, there's one, I mean, for around here, and it's a book that I bought through our local fly shop at Hunter Banks uh, in Asheville. It's called The Western North Carolina Fly Fishing Guide. Oh, nice. Um, and it's 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 basically a the fly fishing trail, and it, it highlights Western North Carolina, Smoky Mountains, like, here's the river, here's the stream, here's directions and how to get there, mm. here's what flies to use at different times of the year. Um, and so I just started going through that book and going, Oh, let me try this. Let me go to this place. Let me go to that place. And, um, it, it, I, I would highly recommend that it, it's, it's, if you're coming to this area, um, you know, they sell it at Hunter Banks. I think you could probably get it online as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a, it's a great resource for around here. Um, as far as saltwater goes, I mean, both Dave and I are pretty new into the game. And so it's just been, you know, we're learning from other people in that, you know, talking to guides and people that have just been around it for so long that kind of tell us what to do and, and how to do it. So, yeah, I like uh, Gink and Gasoline, if you're familiar with them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we've got some friends there. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to Justin Pickett. But he 
he actually did a write up on us early on last year when we were just launching. And um, like if if we're going somewhere new, I'll I'll ping Justin and say, hey, do you know anybody in this area that we should talk to? And he's been good to recommend guides um, all over the southeast oh, for cool. specific species. But um, so they're a good one. I think Brian and I both read the Drake pretty pretty yep. regularly. Um, love that magazine. And I mean YouTube, you know, you just YouTube anything you want, yeah. um, like tarpon or bonefish or something. Even if it's just an, a mental escape, it's just kind of cool to see what people are doing out there. Yeah, yeah. No, I know there's no sh- short supply of resources, and I've I've already interviewed a lot of these people. And Jim with Yellow Dog, he's scheduled to come on, so I think I'm going to keep keep digging into some great guests. Um, so you know, as we kind of you know think about you know the long term plans, we kind of touched on that a little bit. But do you guys know what you know, do you think about that kind of what, uh, I mean, it looks, it sounds like you're fairly successful right now, but in the long term, what, what success looks like, looks like for you guys with this business? Well, I think right now the focus is on, on we really just, we're going to, we're going to continue to grow our inventory. Um, you know, we want to continue to, to be able to provide yeah. what customer wants and needs and that, and that takes time and, and pouring money back into the business as a whole. And so, we're gonna, we we want to continue to do that, and I, I don't see stopping with just you know just obviously the yellow dog thing is huge, but you know lodges there's there's so many lodges there's so many guides across the country we can help them by working with their customers and send their customer stuff instead of guides using their own equipment right you know and and beating up their own equipment and save money there for them and and so it's I think there's so many different avenues. We want to work with fly shops and, and figure out a way to, to kind of create a model to, you know, have a win-win situation there. Um, I, I think there are many, many, many gener- revenue generating opportunities with um, this concept. And so, hmm. you know, I think that really right now the focus is continuing to build our inventory um, and, and create strong partnerships in the fly fishing industry. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it, yeah, the more you think about it, the more you think it, you realize, yeah, what a, what a cool idea it is because it seems like it's kind of unlimited. I mean, there's no way you're going to ever get around to all the fly shops or probably even all the lodges. So, you know, I mean, I, well, you guys have kind of niched down now and, um, yeah, it's interesting to think about how, you know, the next five or 10 years, cause I'm sure you guys are going to have, if you don't have it already, you're going to have some competition. You're going to have to you know, have to think about, but likely if you've built those relationships, that won't, that won't be too big of a, a deal for you. Yep. I agree. Well, and I think, I, I, I think, I mean, I, it's, we talk about the competition side of it and we're like, you know what? It, it, we were the first and, and that, that like, it's so cool to us to think about that. We, we started this concept yeah. and will come, come alongside of us. Great. But, you know, we feel good about the relationships we have and it's, it's all a relationship you know, oriented game. So, yep. That, it's funny when you say uh, that, you know, that we, we were the first because there's a ton of examples throughout history of businesses that were, you know, the first company was not the one that stayed. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to think of a good example, but, you know, Apple probably isn't a good one. But there's a lot of these companies that came up and then the next company that took that idea and took it on to the next level is, you know, is the company that we know of now. I'll have to in the show notes. I'll try to get some links to what I'm what I'm talking about here. But um, yeah, what do you guys think about? It? I mean, when they when you you come on here, I mean, how do you you know one of those things is continue to provide more value. I mean, how how do you guys you know get into that where you keep you know making sure you guys are uh, staying above the rest? Well, um, to my take, I, I think when we started looking at this, uh, we didn't pioneer the idea. Um, there have been people that have tried and um, they're no longer around. And so we were aware of that and that, so I don't think we, we pioneered the idea, but we're the, I think we're the first entity to take it as far as we have, um, Mm. partnering with premium brands. And I think that one of the drawbacks to the people that have come before us, uh, may have been with brand associations or just maybe the, maybe the industry wasn't ready to support it. And, um, uh, you know, I think we've we've solidified uh, quite a few things to where Brian and I can stand the test of time, um, in, in large part of just the associations that we already have. And so, uh, yeah, I I would not be surprised uh, to open up my computer one day to find that there was like a 
competition with a similar name or something and right. we're trying to figure out how to how we'd ultimately handle that i mean competition is good for everybody but yeah. um it's it's kind of weird being being the sole option um mm-hmm. so um yeah i don't yeah. know anything no well and i i you know again i think i i'm a i've all i'm on the thinker uh i like to be mo- mobile in my thinking and and you know i don't want to end up like like blockbuster or you right. know like, there's the example yeah kodak, you know kodak actually invented you know the 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 digital camera but never took it anywhere and and they ended up you know falling out and so that's right i think i think the the, the reality of this is we need to be able to think on our feet and we will um and we'll continue to listen to customers we're going to listen to the industry we're going to you know, take notes and hear feedback and, and, and talk it out and, and figure out how to grow our business the best way. And, and I, I, again, I think second to, to, to none, what we want out of this is customer service. Like we want to be able to outfit somebody with what they need, get it to them in time, you know, and we, we pride ourselves in that. So we're trying to grow the right way to not just go from A to B really, really fast. Um, we want to do this in increments and, and figure out the best way that we can help the industry as a whole. Nice. Yeah, no, that's well put right on. Well, do you guys want to jump into a really quick rapid fire round here? Yeah. Sounds great. All right. Um, so first thing, you know, just getting on the business side, um, you know, what do you think, what is your, you know, what help, you know, do you guys need to, to kind of grow this business to the next level? Have you thought about that? Like as far as resources or other, is there, is there a piece in your business where you think maybe you need to do a better job at right now? Hmm. Well, we're automating our website to a degree, uh, to better facilitate, uh, you know, one click rentals. Oh, wow. Uh, one, right one, now. one click rentals. And now is that, uh, that's not a trademarked, uh, you could take that from Amazon or that's not Amazon's thing. What, what's theirs? <laughs> I guess you're not you're not throwing that out there, but that's essentially the same thing, right? One click, which is amazing. I, that's like uh, so people come on there and just pretty much you know a click and their their information's there and it's and it's it's a go. It's getting shipped to them. That's that's the vision. Uh, it may take several iterations to get to that point, but right now uh, it's it's a, it's labor intensive, which we don't mind. Um, every rental is handled personally right now, and I. Part of us, I don't think, wants us to change that entirely, but it would be nice to enable customers to be able to reserve rods and reels um, themselves, and then we just kind of get an email kicked over that says, hey, by the way, this is when you need to ship this. Right. Um, and so right now, uh, it's it's more labor-intensive, but we don't leave any stone unturned. Like We, we get the full spectrum of, of info from clients uh, about what they need when they're traveling, what they're fishing for. And so we can put together, uh, you know, we spool up the reels with specific line. Like if they need an intermediate sinking line for tarpon or do they need a a floating line? Like we Mm -hmm. can, we can customize that. And so, you know, first, first stages of website automation may not incorporate all of that, but it, it would just help Brian and I be able to do more. Yep. Uh, so that's one of the things uh, that's that's already being taken care of. Uh, but uh, you know, Brian, uh, over the past couple of weeks, has gotten us set up with. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but with UPS and FedEx. And so up until now, we would kind of take our chances with either company, and we were going strong with US Postal. And uh, I certainly don't throw anybody under the bus or talk negatively mm-hmm. if I don't have to. But we we had one or two instances where they. Comp- completely screwed us over uh, yeah. and and didn't deliver on time. And so the clients were like, what Ooh. am I supposed to do? <laughs> Brian, you know, had to essentially leave his desk job and, and overnight something. But yep. at the end, the customer was completely happy. And actually, this one particular customer I'm thinking of just came back to us. He was so happy that he's already on his second and third rental. And so wow. um, customer service goes a long way. And I think what Brian said, that's, that's our top priority. And we do not want to drop the ball on that ever. So I hear you. I hear, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a funny, I mean, that's, uh, topics come up, uh, we were ta- I can't remember what episode, but we were talking about how one of the rod manufacturers, uh, you know, had a defect in their rods, and they had a whole line of rods that were basically had to get thrown in the garbage, and they had a ton of customers that, you know, had all these bad rods out there, and, and the bottom line was, is that, um, 
you know, they replace every single, you know, there was no questions, took care of the customers. And I think that's the main thing. As long as you can do that stuff's going to happen in your business, you're going to have plenty of things where people stuff's going to happen, but yeah, you, you guys are on it. Um, what is, you know, for hours, um, you know, per week, this is always an interesting thing for me. I mean, how many hours do you guys put in because you have a, a kind of a day job sort of thing per, per week on this business? <laughs> there's there's many nights and weekends yeah uh, you know just once the kids go to bed it's like you know we're we're trying to figure things out i mean i mean I probably talk to dave like 10 times a day right just <clears throat> if i'm on the road somewhere or, or whatever it's is trying to hey let me throw this at you let, let me know what you think mm -hmm. and um kind of vice versa i i mean honestly it's it we're probably putting in a regular work week with with this too yeah so you're doing uh, it's okay it. we yep. enjoy it you know right um, yeah, we have yeah, very understanding wives who are also <laughs> friends. So that yeah. always helps. Yeah. They're very supportive and, and love it and love that we're happy with it and support us every in any way possible. No, that's that is cool. So I mean you guys have this sounds like a really cool partnership. What would it look like if either one of you were just doing this thing on your own? I mean, how how would uh you think things would be a little bit different or would you be able to do the same thing you're doing now? No. Yeah. I mean, if, if we, you know, there's times where I'm traveling that if, and, 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 you know, part of it has been, we've had to, we've had to, part of the reason we're automating the website and getting a little more organized is because of, you know, this, just the increased demand. And, and we know that there's going to, there's going to be a period of time where we may just have to jump in this full time. Um, and so that's the goal anyway, we would both be loving to do this a hundred percent full time. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, the reality is when you're growing a business, you just have to work in increments and, and try to scale appropriately. And this one, you know, I understand why somebody hasn't done this before. It's a, it's a challenge. I mean, the, to figure out the model and pricing and, and how much inventory to carry and all these things um, is a challenge. And so uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to figure out though. Hmm. Yeah. That is, that, that's, uh, I mean, that is the, the big challenge is, yeah, it seems like how do you, I mean, do you guys have occasionally where people, you know, call you up and they, you know, they need a rod and, and you just, you can't serve them? Or, I mean, how often is, is that? I, that's the biggest struggle, right? That, that can be. Um, I think we fortunately haven't had that instance that I can recall, um, you know, but with working with a really huge and prominent company like Yellow Dog, that was one of the, one of the things to consider is like, you know, we need to we need to just be as prepared as we can be, uh, and, and chance, you know, selling out, so to speak. Um, it's a good problem, but it's still a problem. Uh, you know, we don't want to turn anybody away. Um, fortunately in experiences so far, it seems like if somebody, somebody is really dialed in and they have such a specific need, like, you know, you know, well, I got to have an eight weight. Well, it's like, well, do you really have to have an eight weight or could you go up to a nine? Right. Um, and, uh, and so fortunately, in most of these situations, we can we can tweak a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want to shortchange anybody, but if we just can't accommodate, then we just can't, and we'll be up front. But fortunately, that's not happened yet. Yeah. Okay. And just for verification on the the setup, what what was the most common? You said salt. Is there a a most common weight uh, length and weight you use, or you guys get requested for? I'd say so far it's been the eight to tens, um, and for people that are either going to the Bahamas or. Uh, for bonefish or that are going down to, uh, you know, southern, southern U.S. for redfish, things like that. Yeah. Um, we've rented a fair amount of tarpon rigs um, in the 11 to 12 weight range, mm -hmm. but um, our inventory would reflect more of the uh, eight, nines, and tens. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, that's pretty common. And so, so I always get into a little quick, uh, I've been doing this little quick rapid fire here with your, your favorite beverage in the, uh, after you get off the river. For, for each of you, what, what do you guys go with? Is it is it different? Uh, I can answer for Brian. He would probably go with a Cosmo. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I, I don't I don't mind fruity beer. All right. So okay. you know, I get ripped all the time for it. You know what? I, I kind of like it. So we have we have great beer in this area, and so usually it's a it's a good beer. So okay. Yeah, I think uh, either a local beer or uh, I've I've actually really been obsessed with this prohibition area cocktail called an Aviation. Should look it up. Okay, pretty great. 
Perfect. Perfect. And, and what about, uh, I was just listening to the, uh, the beastie boys on, uh, on, uh, one of the other podcasts out there yesterday, but, uh, as far as music, do you guys, are your taste of music different? Do you have a band or, you know, type of music you, you guys are into? Ryan likes boy bands. <laughs> <laughs> we rag, we rag on each other all the time. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Street boys. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Inya, you like Inya, right? <laughs> Inya, yeah, totally. No, uh, I swear. We have Amazon Music here at the house. I, we listen to anything. My, yeah. my daughter likes anything with a good beat that she likes to dance around to. And, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, if I'm driving in my car, I, I listen to more folky stuff uh, personally, but I, I listen to anything. I'm yeah. also like I, – I kind of like old st- old school Metallica sometimes. Oh, you yeah. Know? Uh, you know, back in high school, that's what I used that's to right. listen to. And so – I kind of bring it back every now and then. Yeah, hey, we we went red fishing back over Christmas, and on the way out to the, meet the guide, we were pumping up some old school Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! What is Kiss? <laughs> what is Kisses? What was their big big song? Did they have one that was like a big? I can't even think of a, a song. A, a, yeah. Love, oh. gun, love gun, probably. Yeah, and party all night long. Oh, yeah. party all night long. That's right. Perfect. You, you just got the. I'm going to put that one in the show notes. A video of party yeah. all line. Yeah, that'll be perfect. All right. And then finally, here. Um, so, sports. Did you guys play any sports at all in uh, high school or throughout your life that you were really into? Uh, I played basketball, baseball, and soccer all the way through <clears throat> elementary and high school, and then went to college and played baseball and golf. Oh wow. Uh, I played soccer at a very young age, and then in middle school, high school, I was I was more of the the band guy. Yep, band geek. Ba- band like what instrument? Uh, at the time, cello, and I still play bass guitar. Oh, um, cool. And I was I was more focused on that stuff. Nice, nice. Do you have any uh, uh, videos out there on on YouTube playing music? Uh, well, let's see. I uh, maybe we should do our like a promo video with you playing the bass. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, I uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. Unless, unless I've been recorded without my knowledge. All right, all right, and, will, uh, yeah, will be. It, and uh, and Brian, so on the basketball, what, what position? I was a point guard. There you go. Me too. Me too. Awesome. So, so you're uh, you're more of a more of a shooting point guard, or what was your what was your game speed, or was it outside shooting, or? A little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. I th- I can't remember. I mean, I think I averaged like. 17 18 in high school nice but just you know mostly you know giving it giving it to others yeah all right good good i like to I like to go on those tangents a little bit just uh i'm kind of interested in some of that stuff so <clears throat> and it makes yeah. makes it uh interesting to fi- try to find a video and kiss was perfect um well that you guys i think we've gone a little bit over i think we're uh we're doing good but I'll, I'll let you get out here in the next six to 12 months um anything new coming up here you want to you know with yourself uh, personally or the business you want to talk about we can expect from you um so we just we already mentioned the yellow dog uh mm-hmm. thing which um the official launch date is tomorrow which is may 1st uh, i don't know when this will air but may 1st is when the kickoff is with yellow dog yep um we are still working on a partnership with the guys at tom morgan rodsmiths Mm-hmm. Um, they are building, uh, some rods for us right now. And we are very excited to be able to offer, uh, their product to, um, so, you know, select individuals that, uh, are really obsessed with fiberglass fly rods mm. as I find myself. But, mm-hmm. um, we, uh, yeah, very, very, very proud to be able to, to work on that with those guys. And, um, the, the new owners of that company are a lot like Brian and I, they're, same walk of life, uh, you know, co-own this, this legacy company that they've kind of walked into, but, um, we're, uh, we're working on that. And, uh, I think that's all I could share right now. Unless Brian has anything else. No. And I think the only thing is, is next six to 12 months. I, I, again, I, I go back to the inventory piece. Um, it's just making sure the, the, the partners we bring on, we just want to be the right partners. Um, we probably, we've always been talking about other rod companies that we'd like to work with. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll continue to, to go down that path and see, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, right. Yeah. You guys have a lot, uh, a lot of cool things uh, coming up. I mean, it looks like a lot of decisions to make and I mean, it sounds like it's just uh, a lot of positive uh, coming up. So if they want to find you or rent a rod, they, they can go to, um, 
um, rentthisrod.com. That's the best place to, uh, if people have questions for you or whatever. Yep. That's it. Um, you can find us on social media too. Just rent this rod, uh, same handle for Facebook and Instagram, but, uh, we're, we're all over. Okay. And are you guys more active on Instagram or uh, any social network than others? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's that's all I have for you. I want to thank you for coming on and sharing, uh, you know, what you guys have going. It's definitely uh, I'm excited because you guys are on in this uh, this little uh, group I have going, which is uh, trying to provide a little extra value for some of the listeners of, of the podcast. So I'm excited to dig into that and and yeah, just w- w- watch your guys' progress because I think in the next year or two we're probably going to see some some more cool stuff coming on. So yeah, just want to thank you for uh, chatting today. Thanks, Dave. It's been a pleasure. All right. I appreciate it very much. All right. We'll see you soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. See you. If you want to find all the show notes with all the links uh, we covered today, just go to wetflyswing.com slash rent and find out how to connect to Brian and David at the Member Society. You get uh, get to ask questions, uh, get some exclusive discounts and access in the groups. Uh, So go to wetflyswing.com slash members uh, to get started today. It's a great way to support the show. I appreciate it if you are already a member and uh, and hope that you're able to stop on by and see what we have going. Looking forward to catching up with you soon and maybe uh, see you on river or online. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes.